Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a look at this brand new 2021 and a half Salem 31K QBTS bunkhouse travel trailer. We're going to take a minute, walk you around the inside of the RV and the outside of the RV, and then we're going to close it all up, show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we are now up inside this brand new Salem 31K QB TS travel trailer here. The Salem product is the big brother product to the also Forest River Wildwood version of trailer. Uh, Wildwood makes the same model called a 31K QB TS also. They run down the same exact factory assembly line built by the same people, same features, options, just a little bit different coloring on how they are put together. So start here in the living room slash kitchen slide out area here. This unit has the Versa lounge setup here. So traditionally you would have a U-shaped dinette over there and a three seat sofa over here, uh, jackknife style sofa. But with the Versa lounge, it actually allows for the back of the U-shaped dinette to pop off, flip around and basically give you a fourth seat. So kind of a nice feature there to just kind of give you a little more lounge room. This thing sleeps a lot of people, so having that extra seat is kind of nice. Now, the sofa will flip down into a bed. You can see pop up there. Then you also have some storage underneath of there as well with some little pull-out bins. Now, the dinette will also flip down into a bed. And you can leave out that back section there if you want to and make into one gigantic long bed as well. So it's a pretty cool setup. And down below the U-shaped dinette portion, you do have two doors that open up and have more pull-out bins there. So a pretty cool setup for a slide-out area. Now up in here you do again have some different color blinds you see pop up there along with a little different coloring of the valances. I have a quick little close up here of your slide fascia. This is a little bit nicer. This is a snap in trim. Older version they basically just shot paneling nails through here to hold this fascia on. They've gone to this snap in trim now so basically behind this trim is where it's all mounted in. So you don't see a bunch of staple holes in this wood around your slide out. So a little bit more of an improvement on the slide out fascia for the model change. Now over here, you do have some overhead cabinets above your kitchen area. Nice high rise pull out uh, sprayer faucet there, a little spring faucet. You have a double bowl sink, a little divider in the middle there, and then it has a little grate over top of it. On the side of the cabinet up there is the control panel, which has your slide out in and out button for this section. Awning in and out button, water pump on gas, I'm sorry, water heater on gas, water pump switch. Then you have your monitor panel and some light switches there as well. Traditional microwave, hood range with light and fan. Do you have the oven with the glass front, glass top, three burner stove top, little LED lights and stuff built in. Now back around here, you do have some storage underneath of that sink area. And to the right back, there's a removable panel that allows you to get to your water heater bypass for winterization purposes, right underneath that sink. The cabinet there by the stove opens up and you have three pull-out full extending ball bearing drawers there. Kind of step back here, just kind of looking toward the front of the RV. You have ducted air conditioning throughout the RV. They're currently using the Coleman air conditioner version. Electric fireplace, which is a pretty cool little fancy space heater. Furion sound bar there. It's a nice little uh, radio sound bar, all built in. And you have some storage on both sides. Now, just above the sound bar there is electric outlet, 
your cable slash satellite plugins right there if you wanted to add cable or satellite or whatever or put a TV up here. You've got a huge wall right there to mount a big flat screen TV on. So if you wanted to throw a 50 inch TV up there, it shouldn't be a problem. A lot of room there. Um, there's also pre-wire there for a Wi-Fi antenna to go to the roof. So there's a little wire that runs up there as well. Quite a bit of room here in this area. Now your air conditioner control is right here. That controls your furnace and your air. That is a uh, digital thermostat to do that. You have your 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt Everchill refrigerator that they're currently using. Nice big refrigerator. On the wall down there is the um, carbon monoxide slash propane leak detector there as well. Back here in the corner, you do have a little pantry area or cabinet area for towels and linens, whatever you want to put back there. The slide controls for the kids' room are right here, just outside of their door area. Bathroom right here as well. We're going to pop up a couple pictures of this to show this a little better to you. But you have a nice corner shower, pretty good sized shower there. And it does have the pull across um, uh, curtain, whatever you want to call it. But it's attached to the track at the top and bottom. It's a heavy duty kind of like vinyl -y material. So it just slides across and catches. So a little better than what a traditional curtain is. So you don't have to worry about it popping out at the bottom and leaking onto the floor. Traditional medicine cabinet in there. You do have a little bit of counter space to the left of the sink, some storage over there, a little storage underneath the sink as well. And there is a roof vent in there as well with a little fan in it to help exhaust out some moisture. And then they do offer a skylight, which you can see there. Um, skylight is technically an option, so you don't have to get that if you don't want it, but a lot of people do want it, so most dealers do stock it that way. You have a roof vent in here as well. Now, if you do a second air conditioner, that is where it would usually go, is right there. Um, I have seen them in the past though, put them in the master bedroom, but 99% of the time it is right here. Double bunks over here on the left, nice big slide out. And again, that's where your outdoor kitchen is on the outside, you'll see when we get out there. Now, this bottom bunk here actually will flip up, giving you an extra probably foot, foot and a half of room back here if the kids want to do that during the day. You have a ton of storage back here. This thing's huge. You got hanging closet on each side, those mirrored areas there. Big cabinet in the middle and three pull-out full extending ball bearing drawers. Uh, electric box with some breakers and fuses are right down there as well. And then you got a good sized TV area to go right there for the kids. And room for them to put a DVD player or a you know, video game system or whatever in case of a rainy day they've got some place to kind of hang out back here. Now another new feature for this model is going to be this Versa Queen bed setup here. Now we're going to pop up a couple more pictures here but this Versa bed is basically a sofa during the day, and then you throw the cushions out of your way, flip it out, and it becomes a queen size bed. So this unit could basically sleep four adults pretty comfortably, plus three kids back here as well. Um, so this is a really nice setup back here for sleeping capacity. That top bunk flips up and goes against the window area there. So you can get that up out of your way during the day. The kids can sit back here and relax or at night and sit back here and relax or whatever. There's USB charger ports there on the wall, electric outlet there on the left as well. Over here on this side, same exact thing, USB charger ports there. And then you have an electric outlet down there. So plenty of stuff back here, plenty of room for them to plug things in and you know do what they need to do. Now there is carpet back here. Um, I do get the question sometimes, can we do away with this carpet? And the answer to that is no. Uh, the factory will not do away with this carpet because of the way the flush floor slides are designed. 
they need that to just kind of help keep that vinyl from possibly getting ripped up by the flush floor slides same thing over here same purpose they have a little bit of carpeting right there again to just kind of catch that edge and just make things nice smooth transition of that slide out coming in now going on up this direction we're going to run into the master bedroom area here all right up here in the master bedroom area you have a hanging closet on both sides of the bed some overhead cabinets up above there is a little hole cut out in the side of those closets as well so you could reach in there and set some things in there if you wanted to now this bed does raise up you see pop up here in the picture so you do have a little area underneath there with some bends and then you also have a little area below that where you could like kick your shoes off and stuff under there as well you have USB charger ports on both sides of the bed. Plenty of room to maneuver around the bed area here. And then on the big wall over here, you do have TV hookups up there and it's back to hold a flat screen TV. So you could put your TV up here on the wall if you wanted to. Both of the windows in the bedroom do open. So you have an emergency exit window here that'll pop open allowing you to have cross breeze there and then you do have a window over there that slides up and opens as well and you also have the pull down roller shades in here too and air conditioning vent up here ducted air in the bedroom area all vinyl floor in this section as well we're going to run around the outside real quick and then we'll be right back inside after that to show you what it looks like closed. All right, guys, we're now back on the outside of this brand new Salem 31K QBTS trailer here. Um, we're going to start here in the front section, door side, and then kind of work our way around. Up front here, you do have a large pass-through storage compartment you can see here. And right there is your tool for the power front jack tool for using the stabilizer jacks and also for the JT strong arm extra strength portion of the jack as well. These heavy duty scissor jacks on the Salem come down, touch the ground, and they have a yellow bar called a JT strong arm that comes down and hits it from another angle. So it really helps stabilize the RV a lot better. You have a power awning with an LED light strip built in. And it also has the manual override adjustment in the head up here in this first arm. Pop out the little rubber plug, stick a socket in, manually crank it in in case of an electronic failure. Not all awnings have that, so that is a nice feature on this awning. And the arms are tiltable and adjustable for water runoff. You have two outdoor speakers. You can see them lit up here. They're blue. So you have one on this end of the awning and another one all the way down there on the other end. It's kind of nice because they are spread apart a little bit so you can hear it a little better. Uh, a lot of them put them real close together right behind, you know, in one little area and it just doesn't spread the noise out as easily. Traditional RV entry door and screen door, so nothing real special there. Um, you do have a solid entry step, a little bit nicer step than what is on some brands. It is able to hold up to 500 pounds, where a traditional hover step is only rated for 300 pounds. But it comes down, touches the ground, just makes it a little more stable. Uh, definitely nice if you have kids, which this is a bunkhouse, so you probably would. And that basically just helps when they're running in and out of the RV all the time. Large folding entry handle here to help you get in and out of the RV. And next to that entry handle is going to be your model number that just basically identifies the model. So as you're out walking around looking at campers on a dealer's lot, look right there and it'll tell you what that model number is so you can remember which ones you like. Water heaters right here, six gallon gas and electric water heater. The gas switch is on the inside, but here on the outside in the lower left corner is where your electric switch is. And then you have your drain plug there in the middle, which is an anoid rod, needs replaced every once in a while. Uh, but that's an inch and a sixteenth socket. Furnace exhaust out right here. 
stove exhaust out just above that window there. That's a nice window you seen when we were inside and that did open so you can get a little bit of breeze through there as well. Now just behind the marker light here is your fresh water tank fill up. So you fill up your fresh water tank just below that is the white handle down there where you pull it and dump it out. It's a little bit larger dump. It's an inch and a half dump if I remember right instead of a half inch dump. So it's a little bit nicer and will just kind of drain out a little faster for you. Um, but basically you'll fill up that fresh water tank there if you need to take water with you. A lot of campsites have water what they call city water and you don't have to do that. Um, but if you need to take water with you, you can. Now right here's an electric outlet and a cable outlet and then you'll see that they do put a backer right here as well. There's a little sticker right there that tells you there's a backer there for you to mount a TV if you wanted to put a TV mount there for the outside purpose of you know watching some TV while you're out camping. Back here you have a pretty cool little outdoor kitchen area. You have again TV hookups here so you could even set another TV here if you didn't want to put one up there. A uh, little shelf area right there. There's a light out here. Uh, small, ever chill uh, electric refrigerator. These fridges that they put in the outdoor kitchens are strictly electric. A little bit of overhead space on the shelf there. A little hook things back there on the left of the refrigerator area. And you have your sink here with hot and cold water both. Over here on the left, you have a outside grill on a long swing arm. So you can cook out here nicely. Uh, just kind of help keep that heat and smoke smell and stuff out of your RV if you can on a nice day. Your air conditioners will love you for that. Um, little door there actually kind of acts as an awning as well. Just kind of keeping a little bit uh, you know, nicer area there to shade things and keep the rain off of you if it starts to rain a little bit. But that bumper mount grill actually folds twice and then back against the bumper. So when you are traveling, it's out of the way. On the back of the RV here, it is pre-wired for a backup camera, the little black thing up there in between those lights. So you could do an observation camera or a backup camera on there as well. You have a nice arch to the roof, full walk on roof, so you could get up there, walk around if you need to, to uh, kind of check things for maintenance and stuff like that. Traditional four inch square tube bumper, a lot of people store a dump hose in there, but it holds that grill obviously, and then it also holds your spare tire on there as well. Now just behind that spare tire is your city water hookup. So if you do go to a campground that has water, you hook your hose to that and it goes right in through the RV. Detachable power cord here on the back corner. Now, this unit was ordered with the 50 amp electric service, so you have a big heavy duty cord here. Um, some customers or dealers order it with just standard 30 for one air conditioner. But if you want to do two airs, this is a pretty good size unit with three slides. Um, you know, you need that 50 amp service there to support that second air. Uh, just above that is another inlet there for cable. Now, down below is your hot and cold water drains so if you're storing the rv winterizing purposes just behind that rear jack is your low point hot and cold water drains now under this slide down there there's two dumps on this unit the one dump just behind the jt strong arm down there you'll see pop up is for the outdoor kitchen and your actual main dump is over here behind the tire for your gray and black actual tanks that you're gonna be mainly using. Now, right in between the slides there, that is the black tank flush. So there you hook the water hose to that. That shoots water straight into the toilet tank to help rinse it out. Now, it's very important that you make sure your gate valve is open so that water runs straight back out into the dump. You don't wanna leave that closed because it will keep filling up and not shut off and it'll just back flush right into your camper. So make sure your dump is open when using that. Now the unit also, again, multi-slide unit here. The unit is pre-prepped for slide out awning toppers. You can see the little brackets on the ends of the uh, rooms there. So that's where those would mount, Solar slide toppers. 
and the gutter track that runs down both sides of the RV here, or this main side of the RV that we're looking at at the moment, um, has a groove in it for the awning to slide into. So you can slip it right into that track and then mount it right on there. Pretty easy setup if you wanted to add those aftermarket. It's not an option from the factory, but it can be done by the dealer aftermarket. Other side of the storage compartment that you've seen, a little bit shorter height door on this side. The other side was a little bit larger. And these doors are also uh, held up by a little magnetic clip instead of the little plastic ones that break, break off over here on the side. Um, so a little bit nicer setting there. Now we're gonna pop up some stickers here. I'm gonna show you the gross vehicle weight sticker, which has your VIN number, production date, axle size, um, a lot of that information right here. The next sticker is gonna be your dry weight sticker, which does have your VIN number on it as well. And that tells you what the camper weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line. Next is gonna be your carrying capacity sticker, which basically tells you how much you can load into the RV before you break it. And basically you're gonna also have a tire sticker as well that'll pop up here. And that will kind of tell you your tire size, tire pressure stuff. Uh, back to the uh, weight stickers there. That gross vehicle weight sticker is real important, guys. I just want to point that out. That is the most you can load that camper up to, you know, axle weight, hitch weight, cargo carrying capacity, everything combined before you really risk breaking things, you know, frame wise, things like that, overloading stuff. Uh, you know, RV hitch weights and axle weights and stuff all kind of differ by model and everything, but definitely pay attention to that unloaded weight, that gross weight, along with your hitch weight when you are worrying about towing things. And you can offset that hitch weight some by doing a weight distribution hitch and sway control system. Nice feature to also you know, add to an RV if you're gonna to be towing around a lot. Um, on the unit, one of the other things that did change, uh, I keep kind of forgetting, we got model change stuff here, but one of the things that did change is this outside metal, the coloration of it, the texture of it. This metal here became a smoother, a little bit lighter weight looking uh, metal. Now over here, this is the old version. You can kind of see this metal a little different. It has a rough texture to it, a little bit of a sparkle to it. So this is old metal old design, I guess you'd say, early 2021 version of a Salem cruise light versus the new 2021 and a half Salem here. So they changed up that metal a little bit on the exterior look of it. Now back over here to the front section, you do have a battery disconnect you can see pop up down there. So you can turn off that battery when you're storing the RV. Um, you do have a little holder there to plug in your seven-way Bargman plug. Just kind of stick it there so it don't fall out or whatever. Um, important to make sure those cords, the breakaway cable, that stuff are all up, especially if you keep it at home and you're cutting grass or whatever. I've had a few customers here this summer that have basically damaged their cords because they fell down onto the ground and they didn't see it in time. Um, two and five sixteenths hitch ball power tongue jack with a LED light strip built into that along with the uh, manual override for it and you do have a foot that is adjustable for extra height that gives you an extra few inches of height there as well. Uh, lower diamond plate metal across there and then you do have a gray smooth metal up top. Nice arch to the front, the way it's really rounded out to try and help with aerodynamics instead of a flat front like some old style RVs have. Bottle cover here, um, the unit comes standard with two 20 pound propane tanks. That's the way a lot of dealers do actually stock them, but 30 pounders are an available option if you want those. A lot of times here at Couches RV Nation, they do stock them with 30 pounders, but always obviously check to make sure when you're talking with your salesperson. But uh, that might be something you may or may not want. So keep that in mind again when you're price comparing and checking things out. Back in behind here, there is one battery that'll come standard from Couches RV Nation. There is room for two though, if you wanted to do two batteries. 
But overall, a very beautiful RV here, um, reasonably priced, lots of sleeping capacity, cool outdoor kitchen. Uh, we're gonna head back inside real quick, close it all up, show you what happens when it all closes up. All right, guys, we're back up inside the RV here, and I wanted to show you how these slides and stuff close. Now, when this bedroom closes up, this is an extremely tight fit back here, and you actually can't even open this door. But I'm gonna put this one in on the left first, just to kind of show you how this works. Um, the bunk area, that lower part, is supposed to be in up mode. So you just take the mattress off, stick it up top, and then flip it up and latch it so it's out of the way. I'm gonna bring this most of the way in for you, and then we'll technically have to close the door to close up the other slide so you won't be able to see that part. Um, but when this comes in, I'll show you here, this is a tight, tight fit. So you can kind of see here the way this all comes in nice and tight and close to give you all this extra room. So you've got to make sure that drawer and that door is not popped open when you go to open this up. Uh, it normally doesn't, but you never know how rough of roads and stuff you might get on. So when you do go to open this up for the first time, when you get to camp, you want to make sure you bump the room out about, you know, maybe eight inches, six inches or so uh, before you truly open it up. You want to be able to get back in here and check your cabinets. So when this gets in, you'll see that the floor will kind of raise up a little bit on the slide. So that becomes a tight fit. And just to kind of show you here, you can't open or close the door because when that floor comes up, it actually, the door won't open or close. So what happens here, just to show you the back section again, nice tight fit. But on this first cabinet door, it's not gonna really catch and rip that off if that pops open. That handle is in front of that wall but the back doors could rip off so when you first go to open that up got your switch here on the side you're going to want to bump that room out a little bit and then kind of stop so you can go in there and check but before you can do that you have to also bump out this room on the right as well and then once you get that bumped out a little bit, you can come back here, kind of check your cabinet doors, make sure that nothing popped open. And if it did, reach back in there and push it closed. Now you could come up with some sort of little latch system or something if you wanted to, to try and put on there. Some customers have done that, but that's something that you do want to keep an eye on, on this model. That's really important and even other models as well. But so just a little, quick showing of that we can't obviously close up the rest because we couldn't open the door at that point we're going to spin back around here i want to show you what happens when you close the living room section uh, living room slide out button is up here on the side same thing slide floor kind of comes up at an angle again it's another flush floor slide you can stop let off where you need to stop and let off You want to also, again, make sure that your cabinet door back there doesn't pop open. Obviously, make sure there's nothing in the slide out floor way because it will run them over. So that is what it all kind of looks like closed up. You can see Kind of a snug fit back there. You could take the table out and kind of squeeze back there if you wanted to. I'll walk back over here, just kind of give you a little bit closer idea. But uh, you could, you know, especially if it's a small kit or something, squeeze back there to, you know, also again, check the pantry cabinet doors back there or to get to that back bedroom or whatever you might need to do to check that door, make sure it stays closed or whatever. Um, but just a quick little showing there. I wanted you to see what that all kind of looks like and how that worked. 
I just wanted to show you also guys what it looks like going out here. So basically all you got to do is hit the button to take the room back out. Again, check your cabinet doors there next to the fireplace. Make sure they are closed. Uh, before you get fully out, you might also walk back there to the pantry area and just make sure that doors are, those doors are closed. Um, again, you're just trying to make sure that everything was nice and tight and closed up when you get there so that it didn't pop open and get damaged on the way out. We hear that ratchety noise, that means it is all the way out. It's basically an electric slide with a slip gear. So um, pretty cool setup, guys. Again, appreciate you checking out my videos. Check out CouchesRVNation.com, guys. They are one of the largest internet wholesale dealers in the country and will definitely save you a lot of money.